Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Sunday and happy Mother's Day yes. to all the wonderful, beautiful mothers out there today. Well, welcome to today's teaching, which is being presented to you by For Those Who Choose <laughs> Ministries Incorporated. My name is Anisha Tillman, and I am part of the instructor team here at For Those Who Choose. And teaching with me again today is Miss Diane Boulware, who is part of our instructors team. And Miss Annette Cook. Hello. Who is one of our co-founders and a lead instructor and my mother. So happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Thank you. <girl. laughs> so today we're going to continue on in our series under the Rediscovering the Kingdom umbrella called The Purpose and Power of Kingdom Faith. And this has been a great series. Yes. It's been a learning series too. Amen. <laughs> That's yes. an understatement. Mm-hmm. So over the past few months, we've asked you the question, what is faith? Mm -hmm. Well, simply put, we said that faith is defined as belief. And belief is defined as to believe, also to be persuaded of, mm -hmm. and therefore to place confidence in or to trust. Amen. So it's important to know and understand that the greatest thing a person can lose in life on this earth is the loss of belief. And when a person loses belief, he or she loses hope. Mm -hmm. And when hope is lost, then purpose is canceled and, and meaning has, has no, no definition. definition. Wow. Yeah. That's a state to yeah. be in. This is, it's a terrible Ooh, state to be Lord. in. Meaning has no definition. Right. Yeah. So belief is the source of reason and the raw material of commitment, persistence, and faithfulness. Now, when, we, when belief is lost, life has no explanation. Mm -hmm. So no matter what you might lose in the midst of daily life, we encourage you and continue to encourage you to never lose your faith in life. Mm -hmm. This series on the purpose and power of kingdom faith will be about this very challenge. It's about the need to not just have faith, but the vital need to have the right kind of faith. Yes. So, so much of what we call faith today is simply convenient expectation. In other words, we only believe what we want, what we expect, and are willing to accept. Mm -hmm. And our belief is based on what we define and interpret as good, mm -hmm. right, and acceptable. Mm -hmm. Therefore, instead of believing in the sovereign nature and the all-knowing perspective of the Creator, our faith is only valid as long as our experiences are in keeping with our definition of good. Mm. Wow. So this series is going to challenge the quality and the nature of the faith that you have inherited from our modern day belief systems. It will test them against the record of the time tested champions of a faith in the Bible that overcame every type of challenge in their time. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, our intent in this series on the purpose and power of kingdom faith is to cause you to question the kind of faith you have embraced and to see whether it is of the quality that can stand the test of disappointments, wow. the unexpected crisis moments mm -hmm. filled with the silence of God, and the loss of anything you hold dear. So again, we ask, what kind of faith do you have? Mm. Can you believe in the dark what you were told in the light? Can you believe in hope even when hope stops believing in you? And when in doubt, can you still have faith? Now, the goal of this series is that you rediscover the faith of the lost culture of the kingdom of heaven and begin living at a level of life that does not get bogged down in the constant changes of our everyday life on Amen. earth. Amen. So also, we want you to recognize that the kingdom of heaven is a country. Yes. A real place. It's, it's a, a real very place. real place, right? It's more real than what we see with our natural eyes, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And it is the invisible realm where God lives. Now, just like every other country, the kingdom of heaven has a, a currency. currency. And the word currency is defined as something that is used as a medium of exchange, such as money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well... The currency of the kingdom of heaven is faith. Amen. And the essence of this kingdom currency is that nothing in the kingdom can be experienced or appropriated without believing it is true yes. and expecting it is your right as a citizen yes. to receive it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the kingdom is activated by believing it is real yes that it is relevant yes. and present yes and we must believe the kingdom government and its constitutional promises having full conviction that it will function in your life both now and in the future amen, amen. So our primary objective for this series is that you will be increased with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom of God's original intent and purpose of faith as a kingdom citizen. Amen. And our hope is that you, it will help restore the power of kingdom faith in your life. Amen? Amen. Now, the content of this series is taken directly from the book called Rediscovering Faith, Understanding the Nature of Kingdom Living. And this book was written by our mentor, the late, great Dr. Miles Monroe. Amen. And we strongly encourage you to read this book as well, as you follow along in this series, to obtain an even greater level of knowledge and understanding of the king of kingdom faith. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, we also want to remind you that the kingdom is God's greatest desire and passion for you and I. Yes. And it is vitally important that you study the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Study the kingdom. Yes. We are God's children mm -hmm. and it is his desire that we will rule this earth Amen. and that we will reign in life mm -hmm. with the influence of heaven. Amen. God wants the environment of his influence, mm -hmm. which is his government, yes. and the economy of heaven to come back to earth as he originally intended, mm -hmm. purposed, and planned from the very Amen. beginning. Amen. God wants his heavenly kingdom or his heavenly government to be manifested in the earth mm -hmm. through you and I. Yes. God's desire is that his kingdom government be manifested in the hearts and in the mind of we, his children, mm -hmm. to the point that we take on his culture, mm -hmm. his nature, yes. his morals, his standards, and his values, Amen. so that the culture of heaven is manifested throughout the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. As we said many times before, culture is not in the land, mm -hmm. but instead culture is in the people of the land. That's right. So when you possess the culture of the king of heaven, mm -hmm. you will indeed be able to manifest heaven's culture in the earth. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth just, just like it is in heaven. heaven. Now, for those of you who are joining us live today, we ask that you join, join the conversation. conversation all throughout this live session. We ask that you share your thoughts and your questions with us. And at the end of each session, we always have an open forum. During that time, we will respond to any questions that you may have online. Our desire is that you walk away from these teachings with the knowledge and understanding that will allow you to apply, apply what you're learning in your everyday life. Amen. Remember the parable of the sower, which is in the book of Matthew chapter 13. Jesus explained that the seed is the word of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The word of the kingdom. That's right. The, the word, word of, of the, the kingdom. kingdom. That's important. Yes, it and is. And how the evil one is Satan. Mm -hmm. He tells how Satan comes immediately and steal the word of the kingdom when, when you, you don't, don't understand, understand. it. That's so this right. tells us that Satan operated in our ignorance. That's right. right. That's, That's why right. he's called the prince of darkness. Yes. That's right. Prince of, he rules in our area of ignorance. That's, That's right. right. You know? That's right. Therefore, please, please don't leave this session today without having a thorough understanding of everything that we discuss. Amen. So please join, join the, the conversation. conversation. <laughs> Type your questions or comments in the comment session, and we have a team of people who will be able to share them with us. Amen. Also, if you don't mind, hit the like and share button while you're here. Share this message with others who may want to learn more about the kingdom. It is for, for those, those who choose. choose. Amen. Amen. Now, before we move into our lesson for today, Let's officially open up our session in prayer. Amen. 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 Let's petition the government of heaven to give the most high king of heaven 
permission to manifest his presence in and through this teaching today. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask our die, Sister Di, the bishop, to lead us in prayer. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you started that call. <laughs> <laughs> you pray too. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Yes, Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Let every heart pray. Mm. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, continuously and always giving you all the honor, giving you all the glory, giving you all the praise. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for this blessed, successful, prosperous day that you made and how you allowed us to be amongst the living one more time, Father. Father. Father, we come in the name of Jesus giving you the permission, Father, to operate in, to operate through, and to operate on this teaching today. Father, we surrender everything to you, understanding, Father, and knowing that we don't belong to ourselves. Mm. Father, we was bought with a price paid in full. Mm. So, Father, we come laying aside our Mm. agendas, our itinerary, Lord, and we yield these members to you, God, knowing that you know best, Father. We understand, Father, that you finished us long before before we begin, yes. God. You know every aspect of this teaching. You know every aspect of our life, Father. Yes, we come, God, to tell you that we love you on today, yes, God. We, we glorify you today, yes, God. We and we bless your name, Father. Yes. Now, Lord, we don't come on our own. Yes. Father, we bring all humanity with us. Yes, for you do. are our Father. Yes, so Father. we lift all humanity before oh, you. Yes, Globally, Lord. nationally, and universal, yes. in every remote part of the country, every nationality, every ethnos, Father. Yes. You know where we are because you strategically placed us in this earth, God. Yes, to did, dominate Father. this earth, to rule yes, this Lord earth, Jesus. to subdue this earth, and to replenish this earth. Yes, Lord. Now, Father, I give you the permission mission this day yes. to operate in earth's affairs through these earthly vessels yes. father in the name of Jesus. Jesus father touch the minds of your people yes. Yes. father I ask that you will permanently damage our ignorance yes. let the revelation knowledge of the kingdom of God the yes. kingdom of heaven gospel yes. permeate our minds yes, permeate our hearts yes. permeate every area every aspect of our life yes. that we will know the good acceptable and perfect will and plans for our life that Yes, Father. Father, you finished us long before we begin, God. Yes. You know every aspect. You know every situation. You know every trial, every yes. tribulation, because you finished us long before we begin. Yes. Nothing is a surprise to you, Father. Yes, God. So we ask God that you would touch us right now, God. Look Jesus. upon those that don't know you, Father. Yes. I lift them before you today, God. This is the day of salvation to God in the name of Jesus. Father, those that don't know you, let them get to know you on today, God, God. in the name of Jesus. Father, those that know you, help us, God, to make you known. You said if you be lifted up from the earth, you would draw all All men men unto you, you, Father. So, Father, we come lifting up the name Jesus on this day, God, that you may draw your people to God in the name of Jesus, Jesus. God. Touch right now, Father. Lord, you know our thoughts from afar. You know what we're going to say completely before we even say it. So, Father, take every thought and make it obey. Christ. Yes. Take it captive, Father. Yes. Lord, cancel every word that was said out of our mouths yes. that wasn't in congruence with your word. Yes, and Lord. Father, help us to say only what you want us to say, Father. Yes, God. Yeah because you hasten to perform your word yes. and your word shall not return unto your void yes. but will accomplish your purpose in the earth yes. now yes. father with the authority you gave me through Jesus Christ yes. I cancel every demonic assignment yes. over this earth yes. I bind and come against sicknesses and diseases yes. I bind yes. and come against the lies right now yes. I bind yes. and come yes. against obesity yes. I bind and come against every eating disorder yes. I bind and come against cancer right Right now, yes, I bind Jesus. up arthritis in the name, in the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. I bind and come against every sciatic nerve pain. Yes, yes. I bind and come against every migraine headache. Yes. I bind and come against that spirit of cancer. Yes. I bind and come against this Corona 19, yes, you uncircumcised yes. Philistine. Yes. I command that you take your filthy hands off the people yes. and go back 
to the pit of hell from yes. which you came yes. in the name of the name Jesus. Of Jesus. Uh, Father, yes. I thank you that we're in this world, yes. but we're not yes. of this world. Yes. Father, we came from you. Yes. We are the essence of you, God. Yes. We are your glory, Father. Yes. Hallelujah. When you look at us, God, you see yourself, God. Yes. Glory be to your name, God. Yes. Father, we have your character. We have yes. your nature, God. Yes. You have given us the ability to perform and function just like you, God. Yes. Say so you're anointing upon your people. Yes. Help us to rely yes. on you, God. Yes. Help us to utilize the faith that you have given us, God. Yes. Oh, Father, we thank you for trials and tribulations. Yes. You, you say welcome them as friends, God. Yes. So we thank you, Lord, for yes. your loving yes. kindness on today. God. Yes, Glory. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Father, we're under heaven's jurisdiction. Yeah. We lack nothing, Father. Yeah. We are rich. We are wealthy. We are whole. We are complete, yeah. Father. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for you, dominion over everything, Father. Yeah. Yeah. We bind the spirit of ownership. Yeah. We own Jesus. nothing but have access, access to, to everything, everything yeah. Father. Yes, so we thank you, Lord. Yes. You are our Father. You yes. are Abba. You are our sustainer, our supplier, yes. and our source and only source. Yes. It is in you we live, move, and yes. have our being, Father. Mm. You are the air that I breathe. Yes. You are the I am that yes. I am. Yes. Father, we love you. Yes, we we give you the permission to operate yes. in and on this teaching on today, yes. God. Yes. Give us clear articulation yes. to God. Yes. I lift the teacher before you now, God, yes. this Lord hour. Jesus. Tillman, I yes, plead Lord the Jesus. blood of Jesus, Jesus over her life, to yes, God. Yes, oh, yes. Father, bring to her remembrance everything she needs yes. to know, Father, in the name yes, of Jesus. Father, yes. Father, we love you all today, yes, God. Yes, do, Bless Father. the hearers, God. Yes. Let the word fall on good ground. Yes. Bring the more for yes. harvest of a yes. hundredfold, God. Yes. We thank you. We love thank you. you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. And bless your name, God. Yes, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. yes Lord. Thank yes. you. Yes. Woo, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Bless your name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord God, we agree as in touching. Yes, Lord. With the petition that has come before you, yes, God, Lord. God, by our sister, God. Thank you, Jesus. Your word says we're two or more gathered in your name. Yes. You said there you would be also, Father. Yes, Father. And you so, God, we thank you for thank your you, presence. Yes, we thank you for your manifested thank presence, you, Jesus. God. And you said if any two or more of us agree as in touching about yes. anything in this earth, yes, God. you said you would do it. Yes. So we come yes. with expectation you, that you are doing what Diane has petitioned yes, you for on this yes, day. Father. We have outstretched expectation. Mm. We expect it. You said you watch over your word to, to perform, perform it. Yes. You said you hasten it to be fulfilled, God. Yes. So as she has petitioned you, God, in accordance with your word, yes. we believe we have already received yes, what we have asked you for. Yes, God. So we thank you and we praise you yes, and we honor you yes. as we ask you all things in the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, before we get into our new content for this week, let's do as we always do each week, and that's beginning by reviewing the key concepts we covered on last week. So last week we discussed the last five qualities of kingdom faith outlined in the subtopic, the ten qualities of kingdom faith. We started off with the sixth quality of kingdom faith, which was kingdom faith is given and sustained by the king. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Last week you said many people assume, you know what happens when you assume? Mm. Many people assume that faith comes from the mind of man, 
and it's something we offer to God on our own initiative. However, we said last week, while human free will certainly plays a part, faith itself originates with God. Amen. Amen. And we said we know this because of what Paul wrote in his letter to the people of Ephesus. So we read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10 on last week, where Paul wrote, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Mm -hmm. And this is not from yourself. Come on, mm -hmm. come on. It is the gift of God. Amen. Not by works, wow. so that no one can boast. Yes. For we are God's workmanship, yes. created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. So we said Paul was letting us know that faith is a gift of God. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because of our sinful nature that rebels against God, we cannot generate true faith completely on our own. That's right. Mm. So we reference John chapter 6, verse 44, where Jesus tells us, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, mm -hmm. wow. and I will raise him up at the last day. My mm. Lord. Amen? Amen. Mm. Because faith is a gift of God. He draws us to Christ before we choose to come to Christ. Mm. Wow. Selah. Right. He draws us to Christ before we choose to come. Mm. So it's nothing on our own. I'm just no. right. Amen. God. Amen. We can't take credit for any of this. Mm -mm. Amen. So now mm -mm. we also shared with you not only does faith originate with God, but it is also sustained. God sustains our faith. Yes. He brings it to completion. Wow. which is something else we could never do by ourselves. Mm. My Lord. That is why the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, mm -hmm. who is what? The, the author, author and, and the, the perfecter or the finisher, finisher of our faith. Amen. Who for the joy set before him. Isn't that wild? Do you hear what that says? The joy for the set joy before set him. before him. The joy set before him. He did what? He endured, endured the cross, cross. Mm. scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. So last week we shared with you that the king gives faith to whomever he chooses. Mm -hmm. And without his gift, no one ever comes to faith. Mm. Through God's gift of faith, we draw near to Christ and trust him for the forgiveness of our sins and for the new life in him. Mm. Amen. 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 You're sipping your tea? <laughs> and then through his Holy Spirit, he sustains and completes faith in us so that we endure every challenge and pass every, every test. test. Isn't that something? Yes, Amen. it is. God is awesome. Yes, yes he, he is. God is awesome. Yes, he is. And he does this from start to finish. From start to finish, faith is what? The work oh, of the king. Amen. 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 Now the seventh quality of kingdom faith we discussed last week was kingdom faith is stronger than blood. And we looked uh, and we took a little time explaining to you what we meant by this. So we shared with you that when 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 we become believers and followers of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. we are born into a new family, yes. the family of God. And, and with which our faith forms a bond stronger than the blood ties of even our earthly family. Yeah. So last week we read through and referenced a few scriptures where Jesus made this point repeatedly as a primary aspect of discipleship. So what does that word discipleship mean? We're students of Christ. Students. That's right. Exactly. Yes. We submit to the school of thought mm. That's of right. Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. And what was the school of thought of Jesus Christ? The kingdom. The kingdom. That's it. Repent, for the kingdom is here, right? Repent. <laughs> Repent. So first, we reference Luke chapter 14, verse 26, where Jesus says, If anyone comes to me mm -hmm. and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be cannot. my disciple. Mm. Amen? Amen? Then we reference Matthew chapter 10, verse 37, where Jesus says, Anyone who loves father or mother more than me, is not worthy of me. Mm. Anyone who loves his son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So Selah, and think about that. Yeah. How much time are you devoting to those earthly relationships wow. without taking the time to foster this one? That's right. The, the reality is you cannot have 
good earthly relationships unless, unless, unless this yeah. one is in place. That's right. Yeah, that's true. This is the priority. Love mm-hmm. the Lord your God with all your heart, yes. with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your will, and all your emotions. Yes. And when you have that relationship right, then you can love your neighbors as yourself. That's right. And who are your neighbors, your friends, your family, your relatives, your associates, your coworkers, whomever. You can't have this kind of relationship right unless this is right. Because he got to give us the love to love them with. Oh, Come on, right? that's right. Amen. Faith and love work hand in hand. That's right. That's right. They friends. That's, that's right. bodies. That's right. That's right. Come on now. <laughs> so we then read Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 through 50, which was an account of Jesus making this point once again. Jesus was talking to a crowd of people about the kingdom, as he typically did. Mm-hmm. The kingdom. Mm-hmm. The kingdom. The kingdom. And while he was speaking with them, someone came to him to let him know that his mother and brothers wanted to speak to him. So what did Jesus say? Well, in verse 48, Jesus responded, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Mm. Then he pointed to his disciples and said, here are my mothers and my brothers. Mm. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother, my sister, and my mother. Shade. Mm. God, <laughs> that was really shady, wasn't it? <laughs> that was shady. So we also read in Mark chapter 10, verses 23 through 30, and saw Jesus driving this same point home even further as he talked with his disciples. Mm-hmm. And verse 29 and 30, he said, I tell you the truth. No one who has left home Come or on. brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers or children or feels mm-hmm. for me and the gospel, which is the good news of the kingdom, mm-hmm. will fail to receive a hundred times as much Ooh. in this present age. Wow. Homes. Not when you die and go to heaven. Come on, come in on. In this present, present age, age yes. homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields. That's your wealth. Along with persecution and in the age to come, eternal life. Amen. Now, last week we said that the kingdom faith is not only stronger than family blood ties, but it is also stronger than the fear of having one's own blood shed. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Mm. Wow. So we we said, consider what the writer of Hebrews tells us about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 12, verses three through four. He wrote, consider him, speaking of Jesus Christ, who endured such opposition from sinful man, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart when you're in your own struggle, Mm. okay? Mm. He said, consider Jesus, who, who can, you know, and the opposition that he received from sinful man. Yeah. So when you go through trials and tribulations, he said, you should not grow weary. In your struggle against sin, he says, you have not resisted mm. to the point of shedding your own blood. Come on. Mm. Come on. And he did. Yes. Yeah, so he's telling us not to grow weary. Jesus is our example. That's right. Because we're going to, he tells us in this world, we you will shall. have trip. He you shall so. means absolutely, positively, positively will a shadow of a doubt. have trouble. That's right. He said, but be of good cheer. And I have overcome, overcome the, the world. world. Amen. Amen. So we shared with you that history is filled with examples of believers who were faithful under every sort of trial and persecution, even unto death. Mm. And we ask you this question. What about you? Mm. How far has your faith been tested? Selah, which means to pause and calmly think about that. Wow. Mm. Remember, as we said many times before during this series, your faith is only as strong as what? The, the test that survives. Woo-wee. Your faith is only as strong as the test that survives. Mm. Amen. Amen. Now, the eighth quality of kingdom faith we discussed last week was kingdom faith is purified by tests. Mm. My, 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 my. You've been through the fire? You felt like you've been through the fire? You know, <laughs> yes, fire so. purifies, right? And that's, yeah. what I, that's what I was about to say. That's all I think about when I hear that word purify is fire. <laughs> fire. Burning off all the junk in your yeah, Absolutely. I got a song, Been Through the Fire. Oh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> we'll let you sing the I'd be dangerous if I could sing oh, it. That's what I was saying. No. Not a loose. Not a loose. <laughs> <laughs> so as we share with you many times throughout this series, faith cannot grow without being tested. Wow. Until it is proven in the tests and trials of life, faith is of little value. Mm. Did you hear what I said? Mm. Let me say that again. Until it is proven in the test of trials of life, faith 
is of little value. Mm. And we said kingdom faith is more than just words. Come on, come on. Come it, on. Rese it reveals itself in good works and proves itself in the endurance of trials. Come on. Mm. What does that word endurance mean? What does it mean? It means lasting. I was about to say holding yeah. on for yeah. a long time. A long time. You have to without with the without bitter, wavering without and without getting bitter yes oh, and oh. without getting angry yes. oh, oh. and upset yeah oh, oh. and wanting to quit yeah but being at peace yep and having joy and showing love and expressing love to all those you come in contact with Endure. That's endurance. That's endurance. endurance. We want to break it down so you can make this, yeah. make it relevant. Wow. Yes. So that because you can't do what you don't know and understand. Mm. That's right. So endurance doesn't mean to be bitter and hate it, have hatred in your heart. Just go through it when you're love. going through it. Right. You're going through it, Father. I love you. Yes. You know, despite what I feel, God, I love you. Yes. I know that you are in control. I give you the permission to do your will. Yes. You said it is this. Yes. You said in your word that, you know, you said you have never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging bread. That's right. You said the fervent and effectual prayers of the righteous available. make much power available. That's right. You said you have made me the righteousness of you in Christ Jesus. You know, when you go, you, mm -hmm. you're not being bitter mm -hmm. by what you're going through. You're continually praising the Father. Yes. Consider Job. Yes. The Bible talks about he did not lose his integrity. Neither did he curse God through any of the time of what he went through. Oh, he he worshiped. Him a wrong but he, wor right. he immediately, remember the he beginning, said so he immediately fell down and worshiped God. And worshiped That's right. God. Yeah. That remind me, um, I remember um, we was at church and I was offended. So I came through the doors and I saw a cook. So I said, let me tell her about what happened. This don't make sense. I'm, 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 I'm ready. <laughs> cook, here she go. You got the love through that. I said, love, I'm going to talk to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I want somebody to be on my so, side. <laughs> so here, here go April coming through the door. I died. I said, oh, I guess I better love. Better love. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So again, your faith is only as strong as the test it survives. Mm. Anyone whose faith consists of words only mm. and not backed up by a lifestyle, I'm taking my time for a reason. Take your time. Go ahead, take your time. Has no faith at all. My Lord. I'm going to say that again. My Lord. Hear what I'm saying, right? Yes. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has faith and your faith only consists of words alone, but it's not backed up by your lifestyle. Like you ain't walking in love. Mm -hmm. You mm. know, you want to do what the flesh wants to do. That's mm. why I ran out the door. I was running. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone whose faith consists of words only is not and not backed up by your lifestyle has no faith at all. That's Come not fair. So we read and discovered that this is, you know, this was a sobering assessment of, of, that James, the brother of Jesus, made in his writings in the book of James, chapter 2, verses 14 to 26. And so we read that last week. And in verses 14 to 18, James wrote, What good is it, my brothers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Mm -hmm. Can such faith save him, he said? Mm -hmm. He said, Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. And, you know, if one of you says to him, this is funny, it's not funny, but it's funny. He hasn't, okay, so he's without clothes and without daily food. Mm -hmm. Right. Somebody comes to you and they're without clothes or daily food and you say to them, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, mm. but you do nothing about it. Mm. You do nothing about his physical needs. What good is it? That's, That's right. what James says. What good is it? You mm. see, he has a physical need, yeah, and you you have a you're in a position to do something about it. Mm. But, you, but you tell him to go and be well fed. Mm. How's he gonna be well warm. fed and keep warm? How's he gonna be well fed and keep warm when he doesn't have the physical things to meet his need? And the right. thing about you're not moved to give something is wrong. Something wrong. Something is wrong. Right. So, in in verse twenty six, James wrote in the same way, faith by itself if it is not accompanied by actions, it's dead. Mm. You see, last week we said people possessing kingdom faith welcome tests because they have come to understand that tests purify their faith 
and help them to grow to maturity. Mm. Well, we said Peter was one of several New Testament writers who emphasized this truth as well. And we read um, what he wrote in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Excuse me. Again, Peter wrote, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that we can never, that can never perish. Listen to this. And into an inheritance that can never perish. Mm -hmm. Never perish. It can never spoil. Come on. It will never fade. It's kept in heaven for you. That doesn't mean you got to die and go to heaven. Heaven is manifested in the earth That's through right. the Holy Spirit, which means you can have access to it now. Amen. But it's kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Mm. And this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in, a, in all kinds of trials. But these have come, he says, mm -hmm. listen, these have come so that your faith mm -hmm. of greater work than gold, come on, mm -hmm. come on. which perishes even though refined by the fire, may be proven genuine, mm. genuine, and may result in the praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Though you have not seen him, he says you love him. Yes. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with with an inexpressible yes. and glorious joy. Mm -hmm. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, mm -hmm. the salvation of your soul. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we said last week, you, you, excuse me. So we said the next time you face a test, listen, remember that its purpose is to purify your faith yes. and make you strong. Yes. strong. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. So the question is, are you going to pass the test? That's the mm. question. That's the, you know, and see, so, you know, we talk about this all the time. God does not allow us to go beyond the test. Absolutely. That's right. He doesn't pass you like the Absolutely. school systems will do. To, even though they know you're not ready for the next grade, yeah, right. Absolutely. what do they do? Oh, you've been in this grade long enough. We're going to just push you through. Right. God doesn't work like that. No. no he you're not, not going to go to the next point that he wants you to until you are ready. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And he's going, you know what? He's going to give us opportunities to practice our, you know, practice this. Yes, yes he mm -hmm. will. We will have plenty of opportunities. And, and, and the opportunities are not going to stop, but, you know, you change in the midst of it. Yeah. When absolutely. it comes, you know how to handle it. Yes. Absolutely. You know? Yes. So the ninth quality of kingdom faith we discussed last week was kingdom faith does not fear trials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So last week we said much of our modern day faith teaching would not stand up to the accounts of scripture, you know, and the scriptures of the trials of faith. So most of the faith in today's 21st century believer is only good for receiving and expecting the blessings and designed only to survive good times. Mm. That's not going to work. That ain't faith. That's not going to work. That's not faith. That ain't faith. Right. So, so out of that, you're going to become wimpy. But that's what's happening. That's what's happened today. Yes. Mm -hmm. Somebody yes. say, boo, you're going to jump. That's what's happened today. <laughs> <laughs> so we said, perhaps this is why many are quick to blame the devil. <laughs> many are quick to blame the devil for any form of discomfort and try to avoid the part of resistance. Mm -hmm. The devil saying, you know, why are you blaming that on me? Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't do that. He said, man, with his legs crossed. Like, hmm. Mm. So, however... Because true kingdom citizens recognize the purpose and value of tests for the maturing of their faith, they do not fear the tests. True kingdom citizens have learned to experience the precious presence of the Lord with them during the trials, which gives them an entirely different perspective on what they're going through. Mm -hmm. What they're given is a heavenly perspective. Yes. So in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 16, Peter encouraged the readers of his first letters to do what? Endure tests and trials with a heavenly perspective, mm. a heavenly mm. mindset. It's like you're looking through a lens. And, and, and so one lens will be looking through it through your flesh. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you look through the situation through your flesh, 
you're going to be bitter. You're going to be angry. Yes. yes. You know, you're going to do all the things that are contrary to what God tells you to do. But he's saying, look to it from a heavenly perspective. Yeah, yeah. And from a heavenly perspective, what does he say? Consider it pure joy. Right. When you fall into Absolutely. ten trials of many kinds. Absolutely. Kind, you know? We can't let our emotions get in the way when it comes to different things because somebody said something to us. Amen. Mm. And that's the truth. And that's that's the true. truth. Because we'll go there. We'll go there, you know? Don't even talk. Don't even... <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and you know that's a that's a valid that's a very valid statement. Because it you is. know the truth of the matter is words do hurt. Yeah, yeah. that's a lie. Sticks and stone may break my bones, and they will. That's what they used to but say. But names will never hurt. Names do hurt. They do that's hurt. a lie. They do hurt. What do you always say? say always say what words do what. They minister. They minister. That's right. They do. That's right. They, life. And God gave us these emotions. Not for them to control us. Absolutely. That's right. But he Absolutely. gave us power and dominion over them. Over them. Yes. Amen. Amen. They, they, they serve a purpose, but not to control our actions. Yes. yes. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Again, Peter wrote, dear friends, do not be surprised at the mm. painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice Ooh. that you participate in the sufferings of Christ. Mm. so that you may be overjoyed when the glory is revealed. Mm. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. blessed. Yes. For the spirit of, of glory and of Amen. God rests on you. If you suffer, he says, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any kind of uh, criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Hallelujah. So in Amen. essence, Peter was telling us that painful trials are common for believers. Mm. It is a part of life for the kingdom citizen residing in a sinful fallen world. Furthermore, Peter tells us to rejoice that we participate in the sufferings of Christ. Why? Because when we participate in his sufferings, we also participate in in his glory yes. and rewards later. Amen. Amen. Now last week we asked you, last week we said, um, um, hmm, forgive me, Lord. Last week we said that you may ask, how can we rejoice in suffering? Mm -hmm. And we answered saying, it is impossible to do so from a human perspective. Come on, come on. Looking yes. through it from a fleshly, earthly mm -hmm. man. Yes. Only the heavenly perspective, seeing through the eyes of faith, makes it possible. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can rejoice in trials. Mm -hmm. That's it. When you look through it from a heavenly perspective. Right. That's right. When you consider what you're going through, you look at it from a heavenly perspective and not from a worldly, earthly perspective. And stop mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. <sighs> you know, we got to learn how to release things to God. Yes. That's right. It's not ours anyway. That's we right. own up and not even the trial. That's, That's right. right. And, and, and we talked about early the faith. Right the faith, the, you know, he's the one who's the author and the finisher of our faith. That's right. So he's allowing this to happen for a reason. Purify you. <laughs> to perfect you. Lord, it hurts you. so good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we said don't look good, it don't, it don't feel good, it don't look good, but, but it's it works working for you. Working good. for your and good. His glory. Amen. 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 Now the tenth and final um, quality of kingdom faith we discussed last week is kingdom faith commits the future to God. Mm. Wow. So last week we said everyone is interested in the future. Who wouldn't like to know what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, or even next year so we can prepare for it, whether it be good or bad. Mm -hmm. So we also shared with you that millions of dollars are spent every year on psychics and fortune tellers. Mm -hmm. Many people read their daily horoscopes mm -hmm. as faithfully as they do the business <laughs> the sports news, and even the weather report. Mm. However, we shared with you that from a biblical perspective, the only legitimate fortune, fortune tellers were the ancient prophets of Israel. Mm -hmm. And even they weren't shown everything. Right. God alone knows the future in its fullness, and he guards it closely, revealing a bit here and there on a need-to-know basis to particular people he chooses at particular times. Wow. And for particular situations. That's wow. right. Amen. Amen. So we said people who possess kingdom faith don't get caught up in the common frenzy, you know, trying to figure out the future. Mm -hmm. Just as they are content to live with the mysteries of life, they also are content to know that, you know, what the future holds, excuse me, are content not to know what the future holds because they know who holds the future. Who holds Amen. The future. I know another song. 
Uh-oh. I know. <laughs> she from a song today. Right. right. We're going to get a concert after that. There we go. <laughs> they understand that the sufferings of this life are nothing compared to the glories of life to come in the kingdom of God. Wow. So mm. they endure with what? Patience. Mm. That's a, you know, that's a simple word, but that's a hard mm. thing that's to a do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the flesh wants to kick and scream. The whole yeah. time. The flesh just wants to give in and do what it wants to do. But he says patience is a virtue. That's yes. right. You know, and he says that tribulation worketh patience. So he said patience let patience have its perfect, perfect work. In perfect. You. Why? To mature you. Absolutely. So that you are lacking nothing. Mm. Mm. So we said last week that, you know, and we said that this uh, might be what Peter had in mind in First Peter chapter 4, verse 19, when he wrote, So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Wow. Selah. Right. right. And we ended last week letting you know that kingdom faith people may not know the future, but they know their future is secure. Amen. Amen. Because we know the one who holds the future. Amen. Amen. By faith they have committed their future to God the king, the most high king, mm -hmm. the almighty one, yes. the one who has the highest authority. Yes. Yes. So by faith they have committed their future to God, the king, as citizens of his kingdom, mm -hmm. a kingdom of infinite power, an unshakable kingdom that can never be destroyed. Never. Amen. It's beauty, it's glory, and the goodness that will stand forever. Amen. 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 Call it I love. know, right? I love the Reby. Amen. Shoo, it's always so good. Yes. It's always so good. And I'm glad, I'm, I'm hoping and praying, or we're hoping and praying that during the review, you get to learn something that you didn't hear last week when Amen. we talked yeah. about it as well. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Mm. So now let's go ahead and move into our new content for this week. So last week we actually finished the subtopic called the 10 qualities of kingdom faith. So before we move on to the next, let's just take a few minutes to recap the high level principles we talked about. Okay. Amen. That's good. So first we said it's important to remember that kingdom faith is steadfast and stable in storms. Mm -hmm. yes. Also, kingdom faith is in God's omniscient knowledge and not in our limited knowledge. Amen. So kingdom faith is beyond our understanding. Mm -hmm. Kingdom faith is rewarded after the test. Yes. And kingdom faith is rewarded by who? The king. king. Yeah. It's rewarded by the king. The king and the king only. That's right. Amen. Gotta remember that. That's right. Amen. Kingdom faith is stronger than blood. Kingdom faith is purified by test. Mm -hmm. Kingdom faith does not fear trials. And the last thing was kingdom faith commits its future to God. Amen. 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 Mm. So now let's move on to our next subtopic, and it is called Let God Be God. Mm. Mm. Let God mm. Be God. I know another song. Oh, boy. What's this, number three? <laughs> 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 oh, man. <sighs> so throughout this series, you have heard and will continue to hear us say, kingdom citizens walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. We walk by faith and not by mm -hmm. sight. It's four songs. <laughs> Rack them up. Just give us a concert when this but, is yeah, over. She won't hit us all. <laughs> but this is the thing about my songs. I don't know all the words, and I make up my own words, right? Oh, no. Oh, no. We, <laughs> so we don't need the concert. <laughs> oh, no. oh, man. So again, we walk by faith and not by sight. Siri, be quiet. <laughs> now, this does not mean that our faith is blind. On the contrary, kingdom faith is not a leap in the dark, but a walk illuminated by the bright light of heaven. Mm -hmm. Kingdom faith is a confident leap in the bright light of God's faithfulness to his word. Mm -hmm. Kingdom faith is not an indecisive or a wavering belief in chance, but a bold conviction in the credibility of the king and the government of heaven. Amen. A bold conviction in his credibility. Yes, bold. Okay? Bold. So kingdom faith is faith in his faithfulness. Mm. So you believe in and have a strong and bold conviction 
and the faithfulness of God. Yes. That's, you know, that's a loaded statement. That yes, is. it is. It's a, it's, a, it's a teaching by itself that yeah. right there. Yeah, because God is faithful. Yes, yes he is. He's, you know, and so you, your trust and belief is in his faithfulness. Yes. yes. Which is why in the beginning when he saw Adam and Eve when they did what they did, he would not go against his own word. Because if he goes against his word, you would never be able to trust him. Right. That's right. You would right. lose trust in him. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so he will never violate his own word. Yeah. So we can always trust that he's faithful yes. to his word. That's right. Yes. Amen. And Amen. He is. He is. Mm -hmm. So now when we walk by faith, we see, as we were just talking about, from a heavenly perspective that is far more vast and more all-encompassing than any view from the physical plane. Mm -hmm. Circumstances and realities that are invisible from the purely human standpoint are open to your view because of kingdom faith while not based on sight, is based on vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So through the eyes of faith, we understand that everyone was created to fulfill a purpose. Everyone. Everyone. That's everyone right. That's okay? right. mm -hmm. God has a reason and a purpose for everything he does or allows. So the fact that you and I are here on this earth is no accident. No accident. I don't know. I don't care who told you what. You are not an accident. Or a right. mistake. That's or right. a mistake. You are here for a purpose. Absolutely. On purpose, for, for a purpose. purpose. That's okay? Right. That's right. So if you are alive and breathing, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So you may ask, well, how do you know this? Well, let's look at what the Lord said to the prophet Jeremiah. So first in Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, before, Before I formed you in the womb, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I knew you. Mm -hmm. Before you were born, I set you apart, and I appointed you a prophet to the nation. Mm -hmm. So he's basically saying, before you were formed in your womb, in your mother's womb, whatever the circumstances were that you were formed in your mother's right. womb, I knew you, mm. and I appointed you. So that appointment that he gave to him was his purpose. That's Amen. Right. Amen. So he had a purpose for sending you into this. He thought about you first. That's right. Come on now. He thought about what he wanted for you to do, what you want, what he needed you to accomplish, and then formed you and created you with everything that you needed to fulfill that purpose that he gave to you. So, yeah. so in Dr. Miles' teaching, he talks, you know, in this particular um, point, he makes several things. He said, regardless of how you got here. Yes. He said, you know. He Under says, the lock, wet lock. In the back of <laughs> the car, in the back of the back in the in the corner side. of the car. Right. Wow. There's no such thing as an illegitimate child. That's right. The act that got you here may have been that way. Right. But, but you, you are, are not. not Ill There's no such thing as illegitimate. He said, because every, regardless of how you come here, you come here for a reason. That's it was right. the seed in the womb. That's right. That's, That's all. That's he says, it. before I formed you in the belly of your mother's womb, I knew you. Yes. I knew you. So no one comes here by me. And that was a revelation even to me. Absolutely. You know, because growing up, you know, we used to think a particular way. You know, you know, God, we were not conceived out of love. We were conceived out of lust. Mm -hmm. You know, God, you know, and it was it was through these teachings of Dr. Miles, and I, and I kid you not, that I came into the knowledge of regardless of the act that got me here, God got me here for a reason. I'm here for a reason and for a purpose. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, that was that was that religious stuff that told you that. Well, you, I can't even blame because, it on religion because we didn't grow up in the church. I didn't know it. I didn't know. You just came to your own conclusion. No, no, no. Okay. It was it was when I started. No, when I honestly when I started listening to this, his teachings. Okay. And this was back in the nineties. Mm -hmm. But think about it, that was in the nineties. I was already an adult then. I was living, I was working in different environments, being inferior, you okay. know, having, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? low self-esteem and an right. inferiority complex because I'm thinking certain ways. I can right. imagine you with low self-esteem. Oh, absolutely. I had it. Uh -huh. No question. No question. But it was being delivered by hearing this word. Yes. That God knew me before he formed me in the belly of my mother's room, despite the circumstances of my birth. I'm here for a reason. Come on, mm. man. And so it was when he, you know, I started, you know, not relying on my own abilities. Yeah. And, and he says, I'm able to do exceeding abundantly above all you dare ask, think, imagine, according to what? The power that's working within in you. you. So the power was in me. But when you don't know the power is in you, you think that, mm. 
you're you're operating on your own accord. Yeah, yes. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not smart enough, you know? Mm. And I always had this fear that they were going to realize I wasn't as smart as they thought I was. Mm-hmm. But there was something working in me, and I didn't know what it was. The power, the power. of God. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. anyway, mm-hmm. didn't mean to get sidetracked. Okay. Nope, it's not sidetracked. That's, good. That's right That's in line good with what stop. we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Amen. So then in Jeremiah 29, chapter 11, the Lord said to the prophet Jeremiah, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, Mm -hmm. plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Amen? Yes. So now it's important to note that the word hope here does not refer to wishful thinking. That's right. Come on, come on. But to a certainty based on the unshakable integrity of God's promise, even if it's not yet visible. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can trust our entire future to God because his word is true. Yes, it is. And because as we walk by faith, he gives us vision Mm. related to his purpose for our lives, for each of us. That's right. Vision is your purpose in technicolor, Dr. Miles would always Mm. say. Yes. Yes. That's how you know what right looks like because God gives you sight. Yes. Before you physically see it. He yes. gives it to you. Yes. And so when you you know what right looks like because he's already showed you. That's right. Which means you won't settle for what's not right. Come on, yes. now. Amen. 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 Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> so your purpose is your vision assignment for your life. Amen. And the vision is revealed through faith. Yes. So many people live their lives and never discover who they are mm. or what they are meant to do. Mm. Yeah. But kingdom life means being brought out of the darkness of unknowing and ignorance and to the light of purpose and relationship. Amen. Mm-hmm. So God defines who we are and he tells us who we are and how we were brought out of darkness and into his marvelous light. In this scripture we're about to read, I'm going to ask our dad to go to 1 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 1 through 10. Amen? Amen. Listen carefully and follow me because I'm getting ready to give you your identity. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Amen. And the word of God reads, Therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have test- tasted that the Lord is good. So you mm. can grow up in your salvation. Come on, so you man. can grow so up. So you can grow up. <laughs> you need to grow up in your in salvation. Your salvation. Okay. That's right. Because <laughs> you've already tasted that the Lord is good. That's right. Amen. Mm-hmm. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, Mm. offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in the scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone Mm -hmm. and the one who trusts in him will never never be put to shame shame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now to you who believe this stone is precious but to those who do not believe the stone the builder rejected rejected has become the cornerstone Mm -hmm. and this a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. Mm. They stumble because they disobey the message, Mm. which is also what they were destined for. Mm. But Mm -hmm. you are, check it out, Mm -hmm. a chosen people, a royal priesthood, Mm -hmm. a holy nation Mm. on two legs, (laughs) God's special possession, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness yes. into his wonderful light. Mm-hmm. Once you were not, not a people, people mm-hmm. but now you are 
the people of God. Amen. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 You know, we talked before about that royal priesthood thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Royal means you are ruler. Yes. Right. God created you in the beginning to be a ruler. Yes. He says, let them have dominion Amen. over the earth. Uh -huh. So we are supposed to rule this earth. Yes. Come with on, the influence man. of heaven. Amen. But we're also a priest. Yes. A priest represents the Father. Yes. There was never supposed to be a separation of church and state. Come on now. You are supposed to be a ruler to rule and govern the nations, mm -hmm. but you're also supposed to represent the king of heaven Amen. in your earthly situation. Come on now. So that's when you say I'm a royal priesthood, you're a ruler and you're a representative of God in this earth. Mm. Amen. 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 Mm. 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 That's your identity. Yes. Yeah. That's what God created you for in the beginning. Absolutely. Yes. And he has not changed his position on that. No, he mm. has not. Amen. He will and not. he never he, will. He never will. Come on now. Amen. Amen. So, and thank you for reading. So again, in verses 9 and 10, it says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, holy nation on two legs on two legs right <laughs> <laughs> a people belonging to god mm -hmm. that you may declare the praises mm -hmm. of him who mm -hmm. called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light what does that mean that means you were once in ignorance there you go and, and now you, you have, have wisdom. knowledge you have knowledge of god amen yes amen. sir hallelujah then he says once you were not a people mm -hmm. but now you are the people mm -hmm. of god mm -hmm. and once you have not received mercy but now you have received mercy amen. hallelujah so this lets us know that as kingdom citizens and god's chosen people we are the royal children of the king. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. So children of earthly royalty are groomed from birth to know who they are, what they are to do, and how they are to behave as princes and princesses, Amen. right? Well, God's kingdom operates the same way. Mm -hmm. He gives you a vision of who you are and what he wants you to do and that vision is your life assignment from your king and your father. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. That's deep, isn't it? But yes. that's why it's important to study the kingdom. Yes. That's, so you can understand mm -hmm. that. If you read the word of God from any other perspective, yes. you're going to take everything out of the context. That's right. Yes. You have to read it with the, with the kingdom, yes. the, you, the, the knowledge of the kingdom and how the kingdom is set up yes. in order for you to understand the concepts, the precepts and everything. And you got to understand that. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because mm -hmm. you'll, you'll, you'll misinterpret it. You yeah, will. Exactly. And that's you what's will. happened. Mm -hmm. That's what's happened. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So fulfilling that vision makes up your purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Kingdom faith helps you see and understand the vision that you receive from your father. My, my, my. So today we're asking you a rhetorical question. Mm -hmm. What vision has he given you? Sila, mm -hmm. pause and calmly think about that. Because he gave you one. Everybody. 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 Mm -hmm. Everyone has a vision, a purpose, and a vision for yes. their lives. Yes. yes. And only the king can give you that. Only. Only the only king. Only the king. And that's why it's important for parents, when the Bible says to train up a child in the way they should go, it's important for parents to understand regarding their children that each and every one of us came here for a reason, even our children. Mm -hmm. And my purpose for my children's life may not be God's purpose. Mm -hmm. And when we try to put our own purpose on their lives, thinking that we want them to do what we want them to do, and it's not in alignment with the king, we're setting them up for failure. It's That's called right. dream killers. Yes. That's exactly what it we're is. We're killing and their it dreams. happens so often. We yes. do. It yes. does. It does. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Now, whatever your vision, one thing is certain. Every vision will be tested for authenticity. Mm, mm, mm. Every vision will be tested for authenticity. Wow. No one is exempt from testing life, and this is especially true for kingdom citizens. That's right. Being born is the only necessary qualification. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. So generally speaking, the test we face will relate to the vision we have received. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, the safest way to avoid major tests in your life is to decide not to fulfill your vision. Say that again. Mm. Slow it up. 
the safest way and the easiest way to avoid any major test in your life is to decide to not fulfill your vision. So don't fulfill your vision and everything be just fine. That's that's like it won't be just fine. That's like a you won't experience the test. You won't experience the test, but the reality is you're not being used for what you were intended for. Come on now. Exactly. And that means you know, that's a waste. And you miss out on so much. Right. You're not you'll you'll never be fulfilled in life if you're not doing and being what you've created and purpose to be. So do you lose faith in life? during that time that could be mm. you know because if you if you're not if you're not doing what you were created in purpose to be mm-hmm. you are existing and not living right and that's a bad space that's to a be bad in. space Absolutely. to be in that's a Absolutely. very bad space to be in just existing Absolutely. there's never fulfillment and that's where a lot of people will turn to different things to mm-hmm. try to fill a void yes but nothing will ever fulfill ever. that void mm-hmm. right right other God than, created that space in us just for him. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. Mm, mm, mm. He gave us a vision, mm. but he also mm. gave us the enabler to fulfill it. Yes. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. That's the power. He's the enabler. Amen. Yes. Amen. And not only, so we have the Holy Spirit, but he created you to do everything that he, does, that he purposed and planned for you to do. So you may not know that you have those abilities in you, Mm -hmm. but sometimes you might even going through those tests, you might figure out, oh, I didn't know I could do this. (laughs) Right. Oh, I didn't know I had this in me. Oh, look at me. (laughs) But that's why he put you through those situations. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he says, you know, he it's like he's it's like you working, you know, weights. Right. Yes, you know right. you don't know these little muscles exist in there right. until you, you have to lift so those you, weights. Exactly, it don't feel Absolutely. good, does it? Does it, Sister Deb? Don't feel mm. good. <laughs> <laughs> but if you keep working them, yeah, they're gonna pop out. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So again, the safest way to avoid major tests in your life is to decide not to fulfill your vision. So in other words, just decide not to be yourself mm. and you won't have too much trouble in life. Mm. You going to have trouble cuz you're not going to be you're going to be empty yeah. and like you said living a life of unfulfillment yes. wow. and just existing but you mm. won't see the major tests and trials that we've been talking about. Right. You you'll see some tests and trials but they're going to be on another level. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm, mm. So, of course, you'll also end up being and doing nothing. Mm -hmm. That's it. But the moment you discover and decide to pursue your assignment, you set yourself up for tests. The key is that it's going to, like, you know, and I've been watching his teachings for so long, but, you know, one of the things he says in this is, you know, the tests and trials, they don't come out of no for no reason. Come on Absolutely. now, they that's come right. To see if you believe what he told you. Yes. Absolutely. You know, it's tested yes. for authenticity. Do yes. you believe that God gave you this vision? Yes. Mm-hmm. You yes. know, because and the test is going to come to make you want to fall away from it. Yeah. And if you fall away from it, you didn't trust and believe what God told you. Ooh. Right. You questioned, you doubted what God told you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, it's going to come. It's going to come. So stop believing the lie that testing is a sign that you are out of God's will. Mm. Right. Not at all. Jesus had to be tested. Come on yeah. now. Yeah, absolutely. Who, who are we? Who are mm-hmm. we? Testing is a sign that you are in his will. Amen. The devil doesn't bother trying to stop someone who isn't going anywhere anyway. Your vision assignment will be tested, like you just said, for authenticity. Mm-hmm. This means that God has designed life in such a way as to test you to see if what you claim God told you to do is authentic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you say, God told me to go start this church. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're going to be tested to see if God yeah. told you to start Absolutely. that church. Okay? Absolutely. Oh I'm, I'm going to stop there. I ain't going to go no further, okay? <laughs> see, love. Part of the think on that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, if you don't want to be tested greatly, do little things or do absolutely do nothing. nothing. Yeah. Mm. Remember, if you aim at nothing, you will always hit it. 
Wow. If you aim at nothing, you'll always hit it. But what's the value in that? Right. There is no value. There is no right. value in that. Right. Anyone can fail in life, but it takes determination and faith to succeed. Mm -hmm. Fulfillment in life means understanding your vision, rising to the challenge, pursuing your purpose, and welcoming the test that come as an opportunity to prove that your vision is authentic. Mm -hmm. So the test is not to destroy you, but to prove your vision. Mm. And you will never know who you really are until you are tested. Mm. God doesn't allow tests in your life because he wants to destroy you. Mm. Come on. But Come he on. allows those tests so that you can discover what you're made of. And that's the truth. How thoroughly you trust God mm -hmm. and how deeply you believe in your own assignment. Mm -hmm. So Abraham is, was one of the people that was tested in just this way. And we talked about Abraham a lot during this series, mm -hmm. but today we're going to walk through the scriptures to see exactly what God promised him, how he was tested, and how he passed the test. So Genesis chapter 12 is the first time we see the Lord talking to Abraham. Let's read to see the promise the Lord well, excuse me. <laughs> Let's read to see the promise that the Lord gave to Abraham. I'm going to ask Aunt Dye again to go to Genesis chapter 12, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Amen. And I'm Amen. reading from the NIV Bible. And the word of God reads, The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land I will show you. Mm -hmm. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Mm -hmm. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curse you, I will curse. And all the people on earth will be blessed through you. Mm. I'm blessed through Abraham. Amen. Amen. Hey! <laughs> Amen. Amen. So in verses 2 through 3, God gives Abraham the promise and the vision. Mm -hmm. He says to Abraham, or Abram at this time, he yeah. says, I will make you into a great nation, mm -hmm. and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, mm -hmm. and all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Mm -hmm. So then in Genesis chapter 15, God comes to Abraham again in a vision and further solidify the promise he gave to him in chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Let's read it. I'm going to go ask my die again to go to Genesis chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6. Amen. And it reads, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Mm -hmm. Your your, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Elijah mm -hmm. of da da Damascus. Mm -hmm. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Mm. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the, at the sky and count the stars, mm. if indeed you can count them. Mm. Then he said to him, so shall your offsprings be. Mm. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to it to and credited it to him as righteousness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Abram believed the Lord. He didn't he believe immediately. Yeah. He said, "Look up at the stars. If you can count them, right? Your descendants are gonna be as many as those stars." Mm. And Abraham, even though he was seventy-five years old, he didn't and had no children. He said, oh, I believe he believed yeah, God. I believe, I believe you. Well, you say so, Lord, let it be. That's let right. Be done unto mm. me according to your yes, word. Yes, Lord. Mm. Mm. Amen. Mm. 
So here in chapter 15, Abraham or Abram mm -hmm. asks God, what can you give me since I'm childless? Mm -hmm. He's like, I ain't got no kids. Right, right. <laughs> you haven't given me any children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Mm -hmm. While in verse 4, God responds to Abram and tells him, this man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he's like, God, I'm old. Mm-hmm. I'm old, and you telling me you gonna give me a child? I'm old, but if you and my say wife so, is old, if right? You say it. If you say it, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Then God took Abram outside and said, "Look up at the stars Come and on. count them if you can. If you can. If you can. Then you can. You can. Right. 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 Then He says, "So shall your offspring be." Now He's telling a man who's old with no kids. That your offspring is going to be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Mm -hmm. But Abraham believed God. But yeah. Abraham believed he God. Believed. That's faith. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Trust and belief. Yes. yes. What God says. Yes. And he will do it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God was confirming with Abram what he promised him in Genesis 12 when he promised to make Abram a great nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's important to know that at the time God promised Abraham a seed, he was 75 years old. Wow. Okay? He was 75. You know why you laughing? But 24 years later, at the age of 99, God comes to Abraham again, 25 years later almost. Mm -hmm. He comes to him again and tells him that his promised son Isaac will be born to him in his old age by his barren wife Sarah. And not, don't, so not, let us not forget this part too. During that period of time, during those 24 years, Sarah was like, well, maybe God meant yeah. that your son was going to be born through another woman. So go sleep with your servant, Hagar, hey so that she can bear you a child. Can you imagine she that? She put her hands in it. After 25 years, she might write She's that. like, well, maybe, maybe he heard God, God wrong. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. Don't get beat. <laughs> so anyway, so let's read God coming back to Abraham again 24 years later. I'm going to ask my mother, sister, and that. Look, we, the peanut gallery is laughing in the background. <laughs> we're going to read Genesis chapter 17. And first we're going to read verses 1 through 8. But then we're going to jump down and read verses 15 through 22. Amen. I, I can't imagine telling my husband to go sleep with another woman, first of all. Right? Hello. Hello. Okay. I ain't okay. Gonna, we we're not going to get into that. We're going to leave that alone. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Genesis chapter 17. I'm reading from the NIV version as well. It says, The covenant of circumcision. It says, When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. That's El Shaddai. Mm -hmm. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Mm -hmm. Abraham fell face down and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be a father to many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham, mm -hmm. for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. Mm. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you mm -hmm. and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan will excuse me, the whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Amen. Amen. Now skipping down to verse 15 to 22, God also said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, you are no longer called, you are no longer to call her Sarah. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. Mm -hmm. Now, she, he's already had what? Isaac, Ishmael. He said Ishmael. He's already yeah. had Ishmael. He says, I will give you a, a, a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell down, face down. 
He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Mm. Then God said, Yes, but your, your wife Sarah shall bear you a son, and you shall call him Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers and I will make him a great into a great nation. But mm -hmm. my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you this time next year. Mm -hmm. When he had finished speaking with Abraham, God um, went up from him. And so that's why there's such strife now, even still today, mm -hmm. in Israel between the Israelites and the Palestinians. You've yeah. got two brothers. Right. You've got Isaac and Ishmael fighting over the same land, yes. who both claim Abraham as their father. Because in reality, Abraham is He's their father. father. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But mm -hmm. God said, my covenant is with, with Isaac. Isaac. Mm -hmm. Mm, mm, mm. See what happened when you put your hands in stuff? Yeah. You mess stuff up. That's a prime example. Mm -hmm. And it, this is how many th th hundreds of thousands of years later, yeah. and they're still fighting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So after waiting 25 years for fulfillment, at the age of 100, Abraham finally saw the birth of Isaac, through whom God had promised to make of Abraham a mm -hmm. mighty nation. Mighty Amen. nation. Then Isaac was still young, in his teens, God tested Abraham by commanding him to sacrifice Isaac to him as a burnt offering. Hmm. So remember, Isaac was the very son that God promised to Abraham. Mm -hmm. The son that was to make Abraham a great nation where his descendants were to be like the numbers of stars in the sky. Mm -hmm. The son that Abraham waited 25 years for. This was the son that God told Abraham to go and sacrifice. What a test. What a test. You wait 25, 25 years. And I'm 100. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, so then it's, it's more than. It's about that time. Yeah, no, it was about 14. He, yeah, but, right. Exactly. So he's like, I had him probably, I only had him in, with me for 14 years. And you going to take him from and me? And you going to take him from me? But he you told me to sacrifice him? He didn't do any of that, though. He didn't even hesitate. He, he went right to do it. Exactly. He didn't tell his wife, though, right? Mm -mm. He would have been, been a fight. <laughs> <laughs> you going to do what? What? <laughs> God, You're not taking my son out of here. <laughs> right. All right. Absolutely. So God never intended for Abraham to follow through. But he was testing Abraham's faith. How far would Abraham go in his obedience to God? The test was for Abraham's sake. God already knew the faith that was in Abraham's heart, but yes. Abraham needed to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in Genesis chapter 22, just before Abraham carried out the sacrifice of his son Isaac, God stopped him and provided a ram and for Abraham to sacrifice. Wow. A ram, ram in, in the bush. bush. Right. Mm. And as he had the knife raised up in his hand, God yelled out to Abraham. He said, don't lay a hand on the boy. Don't do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Mm. So Abraham passed the test. Passed the test. He passed the test. Abraham, already a man of great faith, came away from that experience with an even stronger faith, as well as a better understanding of God and the promise God had made to him. Mm -hmm. See, Abraham's vision was of a nation descended from him that would bless all the people of the world. And now, because of this, he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that God would bring it about. Mm -hmm. my, 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 my. So Abraham's test proved his vision and it also solidified his faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, your test probably won't be like Abraham's, but whatever form it takes, it will be just as significant in the life of your faith and in the proof of your vision. Amen. Mm -hmm. So remember, if God has given you a vision, he will, set, he will test it. Mm -hmm. So don't dread the test. Welcome it. Amen. 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 Now, I have a question to ask that I really want you to think about and consider. 
How do we get it into our heads that we think we know better than God? Just like Sarah did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Despite all the mistakes we make, no matter how often we mess up, and regardless of the abundant evidence to the contrary, we persist in believing that somehow we can run our lives better than God can. Mm. Pride is what lies at the heart of this Ooh, attitude. Wee. And this is the same pride that got Adam and Eve in trouble in the Garden of Eden. Yes. Mm -hmm. We must relax and learn to let God be God. He is God and we are not. Come on, come on. Anything, listen, anything forced to function in a manner contrary to its design eventually malfunctions. That's the truth. Right? Including people, right? Yeah, Including absolutely. people. Absolutely. So if we try to play God, we will only wear ourselves out with frustration and failure. Yeah, and absolutely. we'll wind up malfunctioning as well. That's absolutely. Nervous breakdown, heart mm -hmm. attack, stress. Absolutely. Stroke. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 I heard his pastor say years ago, he says, you know, I couldn't be God because he has to... Put you down at night and bring you up in the morning. <laughs> Put you down at night and bring you up in the morning. <laughs> you know, can you imagine? And that's like 24-7 because yeah. everywhere around the globe is morning. Yes. Yeah. Everywhere around the globe at some point at this morning, it's morning. So I got to put you down, but at the same time, on the opposite end, it's I night. I got to put you up. I got to take you down. I got to put you up I gotta, every day. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. Can't be God. Right. More than that, if we try to be God, we may put our lives in danger because God will not tolerate any rivals. No, he not will at not. All. Not at all. The only proper course, not to mention the safest, is to humbly accept our place as being created a little lower than Elohim or mm -hmm. a little lower than God. That's right. And allow God to be God. That's right. God be God. So this means accepting our own limitations while acknowledging that God has none. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of this series, we talked about knowing our limitations, knowing what we are and are not responsible for and what we can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to look at the reverse side of it. First of all, there are some things only God can do. Only. Only God can bring a physical universe into being out of nothing. Mm -hmm. The best we can do is fashion something original out of material already at hand. Already at hand. That's all we can do. We manufacture stuff. We don't create because we God created everything that we see. Yes. Absolutely. Everything that we see that makes something else, he, he created. created. Exactly. Yeah. So we take what he created and put it together to make a book. Right. Or to make a mug. Yes. We didn't create it. We made it. That's right. We use pre-existing substance, mm -hmm. right? My yes. always talks about that. It's a pre-existing substance that you use, you manufacture. You didn't create it. Right. right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So only God can create life. That's right. Scientists have sought to duplicate this in the laboratory by gathering together the building blocks of life and then trying to recreate the conditions they believe existed on earth millions of years ago assuming that life would spring forth spontaneously and guess what they, they failed because they're not god they're not elohim no absolutely they're not elohim that's right exactly only god listen to this can change a human heart transforming an angry rebel into a joyful child of God. Yes. Sir. So you can't change people no matter how hard you try. You can't do it. God can. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Therapy may help a troubled person feel better about himself, but all the counseling and pop psychology in the world cannot alleviate the central problem, which is pride arising from a sinful heart. Mm. Only God can forgive sin. Only he can root it out at the source, which is the human heart, and eliminate it. Mm -hmm. He's the only one that can do that. Amen. There are some things that only God can do. There are also some things only God knows. Yes. And one of the most honest and most liberating things we can say to another person is, I don't, I don't know. know. That's it. Mm -hmm. Renee. Mm -hmm. No emoji. I can't. Sometimes we are afraid, we are so afraid to admit our ignorance, so afraid that people, other people will think we're stupid. Wow. 
So we have to be in control or at least make others think that we are. And one of the reasons there's so much nonsense in the world today is because so many people, especially leaders and so-called ex experts, will say anything to avoid damaging their reputations mm -hmm. by being seen as or thought to be lacking in knowledge. Well, Proverbs 1 and 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Mm. A fool. A fool. Mm. So are you a fool or are you wise? Mm. Think about it. <laughs> In other words, the fear of the Lord is the starting point of true knowledge. Mm -hmm. We do not know everything, and we cannot know everything. Right. So part of fearing the Lord is acknowledging the fact that there are some things that only God knows. Mm. Now, there are also some things only God understands. Come on, come on. We cannot, listen, we cannot possibly comprehend everything that happens in life. Some things simply defy our understanding. Yeah, absolutely. So this is one reason why kingdom faith is so important. Kingdom faith can help us be at peace and full of confidence in a world that often doesn't make sense. Mm. There comes a time when we may have to say, you know what, God? I really don't understand this, but you do, and that's all I need to know. Mm. So are you perplexed or bothered by all the things that you don't understand? Well, surrender your lack of understanding to God's omniscience. Yes. Rest in the assurance that he has everything under control, yes. including the things that don't make sense to you. Come on, mm. come on. Now, there are also things that only God can explain. One of the biggest hindrances many believers face in growing a mature faith is their belief that they are entitled to an explanation of everything that God allows into their life. Wow. Entitled, right? They're entitled to know it. So as we saw in the life of Job last week, God is under no obligation to explain himself or his actions to any of us. Mm -hmm. Job was tested as severely as anyone who ever lived and although he appealed repeatedly to God, he never learned why he was tested. Yeah, and you know, it never says that. It never. He never. Right. He never. Uh, it never basically says anything about why. Right. right. God never. God checked him. Right. But he never told him why he yeah. he allowed it to happen. Exactly. Jeez. So when God finally spoke to Job, it was to challenge Job. Challenge Job's presumption. To debate, to debate life on God's level. Mm. Now, while Job saw God as he was, recognized his own presumption, and repented in dust and ashes, God never revealed the reason for Job's trial. He never did. He mm. never did. Mm -hmm. In the end, from mm. Job's perspective, it didn't matter. He was content to let God be God, which means accepting the fact that there are some things only God can explain, and that he may not always choose to do so. Hmm. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. So the upshot of all of this is that we have to know our limits. Amen. We have to learn to change the things we can accept with grace the things we cannot change. Mm -hmm. And be at peace with that balance. Wow. Amen. Remember, all things are possible with God. So when you face the undoable the unknown, the incomprehensible, and the unexplainable, entrust them to God, entrust them to the God of the impossible. Amen? Amen. Well, we're going to end on this note, mm. but as always, there's still so much more to cover, so remember to join us each Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. as we continue this series called The Purpose and Power of Kingdom Faith. It is for, for those, those who choose. Amen. 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 Very good. Now, for those of you watching who desire to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus, forgiven of your sins, and be reconciled to God's family and restored into your kingdom, citizenship, authority, and earth, this new life has been made available to you through the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says if any man sins, he has an advocate. advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus Christ the, the righteous. righteous. Amen. So if you choose this life today, please join me now in this prayer and repeat after me. Pray this. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus the Christ. 
you said in your word that he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Mm. Therefore, Lord, I know that you will not cast me out, but instead you take me in. So I thank you, Heavenly Father, for taking me in. Mm. You also said in your word that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Heavenly Father, as I call upon your name, I thank you for saving me. You said, Father, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. Mm -hmm. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Therefore, Heavenly Father, I confess this day with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord. I believe in my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead for my justification. Mm -hmm. And now, because of this, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, Heavenly Father, you also said, how much more shall you give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Mm. Therefore, I am asking you to please fill me with your Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. Father, I thank you also for baptizing me in your Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Give me back my heavenly language. Amen. Now fill me to the point of overflowing. In the name Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, if you've just prayed this prayer with me today, you are now cleansed by the blood of Jesus from sin and unrighteousness. You are now reconciled unto your heavenly father as his son or his mature offspring. You are now filled with the Holy Spirit of Christ, and you are now restored unto your kingdom citizenship authority with the power, the enabling ability of heaven, and the authority, which is the permission given to you by Jesus Christ, to reign and rule in life. Amen. Welcome back to the family of God. Amen. Now, I challenge you to begin dominating in life by the power of the Holy Spirit living in you, and the authority given to you to dominate in life by Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Amen. Now also, if you pray this prayer with us today, please feel free to let us know in the comments or send us a message, especially if you'd like someone to follow up with you. Amen. 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 Now let's move into our open forum discuss- discussion. Mm. Are there any questions from our audience? Mm. It's not a question, it's a comment. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it says, I remember being taught a lesson on kings and priests, which is wrong. I now know I am both a king and a priest. There you go. Yes, you are. You got it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You are a ruler Mm -hmm. and you are a representative. Yes. Amen. You are a ruler in this earth and you represent your your Mm -hmm. government of heaven in this earth. Amen. You are a royal priesthood, Mm -hmm. a holy nation, a peculiar, Peculiar. God says, my peculiar treasure. Yes. He says, I have called you out of darkness, darkness. which is ignorance, to show forth what? My marvelous Marvelous light, light. the knowledge of his truth in the earth. That's our responsibility. Amen. 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 Royal priesthood. Yes. Amen. 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 Wow. Praise God. Thank you for that comment. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? If you miss any of our prior sessions from our Sunday series, I strongly urge you to go back and watch them all. They are still saved on our Facebook page. You can access them from our website at www.ftwcinc.org. Mm-hmm. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and see all of the videos there as well. Remember to join us each Sunday at 3 p.m. for continuous study. May you be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will know the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, the final thing we want to remind you of today, that is... Jesus is Lord. God bless you all. See you next week.